Today I thought we'd talk a little bit about what it's like to be edited, sort of what it looks like, what it feels like <laughs> to have your book covered in post-it notes. Yeah, I'm going to tell you how it works, so let's do it. Normally I write a first draft. It usually takes me, say, four months to get a, a good solid first draft that I like. Then I go back to the beginning and I edit it. With the one I've just done, which is Revolver Road, the third book in the Echo Killing series, so it's not out yet, it comes out next year, but I wrote it over the winter. When I first finished it, I'm not kidding, it was 116,000 words long, which is, let me tell you, about 25,000 words <laughs> too many. So I knew it was too long, but I just kept going because I wanted to get to the end. I immediately sent it to a friend of mine, and a lot of writers do this. She reads with me and helps me when I'm editing. Her thing was like, oh, there's a great book in there, there's just too many words, so let me take out some of the words. And so she recommended cuts I could make. And so I went through it with her. She just put loads and track changes, cut this whole chapter, cut this paragraph here. You said this already in this chapter and just choppity chop. And by the time we did it through the whole manuscript, we'd cut it by 20,000 words. And at that stage I thought, okay, I can send this to my editor. And then this is what she sent back. <laughs> so I got the manuscript. This is the 96,000 words. Here's her suggested changes. So each post-it is a note from her. She'll go through and say like page 126 to 128. This is a big scene. Remember to balance a new case with old. And then another note, 180 to 181. Harper's already told Bonnie this information. Change this. Introduce this plot point or that plot point instead. It's a very important scene, so take your time. So I'd rushed it a bit. So she's highlighted the sections that she thinks needs work. This is a very light edit note, just so you know. I work with editors who tend to give me quite light notes. I do know people who get, and this makes my heart freeze with fear, 20 page edit notes. 20 pages, oh my God. For me, usually four or five pages, Four pages, probably normal, or less with with Leslie, my current editor. She's very, very succinct. The longest edit note I've ever got was eight, and most of it was waffle. Sorry, editors. <laughs> but editors do waffle. Editing, to me, it's like a huge puzzle they're piecing together, and so they're looking for places where what you said on page 10 doesn't jive with what you said on page 375. And how you keep that in your mind as a writer is one thing, but as an editor, I don't know how they do it. Like, I'm, it's mystifying to me just so you know that we had to take a break because the puppy needed to be picked up. <laughs> so I'll be doing the rest of this video with a puppy in my lap because that is what my life is like. This is my life. Okay, where was I before the puppy interrupted? Let's see. I read from page one all the way through the 400 page book and each time I come to one of her notes then I consider that. And I also have the letter stuck up to the computer so I don't forget when I get to page 180. Pay attention, that needed extra work, that didn't work for her. Like at every edit I make the book shorter because I feel like you start to see the superfluous description, the repetition that even your editor didn't catch. After I edited it and sent it to her it was 87,000. I was just getting rid of extra junk. All of my own waffle because we all waffle. Normally I call my American editor after I get her edit notes and we have just a quick chat. Just want to make sure I'm completely understanding and she knows that I've got it. And that makes us both feel better about the whole process and then I go right and then if I have questions along the way anytime I can call or email her. She's completely engaged. My agent drops out at this stage. It's between me and the editor. So everything takes place in that sort of realm of mostly emails and the occasional panicked phone call. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a process of communication and discussion because obviously we can't read each other's minds. To show willing, you should do around two-thirds as a minimum. So if you can make two-thirds of the changes or at least look at those things that they think need changes and change them into your own way, you don't have to do what they suggest. They suggest things and you know you know the characters better than your editor. So you can take those suggestions and do something completely different but just change it. Like it just wasn't working as it was for your first and most important reader. So you know you gotta you gotta do something. But what is entirely up to you because it's still your book but your editor is a participant in that. So it is collaborative and what you really want and what is ideal is an editor who you agree with most of their changes. Like that is the best hope. When you've got that then it's a it's very compatible. It just smooths along. Blah. Smooths along is not a thing people say. It just moves along. It's never easy. It's always months of hard slog. But if you like the changes you're making that makes it a lot better. If you don't have a book deal, you write your first draft. You edit it yourself. You do one clean edit with yourself or with a friend who 
what they call beta reads it for you so she becomes a, a first reader. You send it to your agent if you have an agent, presuming that you have one. Then it goes to a publisher and you do one round of what they call a structural edit and that is when an editor comes in and says I think the last third of your book is completely wrong or I think this character is not believable or you have too many characters. Can you drop or combine a few of them to tighten it up? And um, perhaps the setting isn't working or these are the big ones, the ones that make your heart stop in your chest because can I do that? Like you're just like, can I do that? I don't know, can I do that? A first round of structural, which is the brutal one where you need lots of post-it notes and patience. If it all goes slightly wrong, you can end up doing multiple structural edits and this is sort of structural edit hell and I know people who've been stuck there for years and you don't want that. I live in fear of that. But what should happen is after a structural you do a line edit and this is a sp your editor going through it line by line looking for little things now. So she's looking for voice. I've had editors say this line here it doesn't sound like this character would say it. It actually sounds like that character would say it and then they're looking for little inconsistencies or tiny plot points that don't work. This is fine work. This is like needlework on the manuscript. That's a bit time consuming, but it's, I love it. Oh my God, I love line edits. Cause then you're just perfecting and you're polishing and you're like, haha, I've gotten rid of the thing. You will never know I wrote that was crap. And now it is beautiful and you will love it. So I love line edits. Some people hate them. So it just depends on your personality. Cause by then, let me tell you, you are sick to death of your own book, but you were not done. Oh no. When the line edit is done and your editor accepts it, then it goes to copy edit and copy edit. <laughs> They should be nothing. It should be nothing. Copy editors, God bless them, because they save us from so much. Are pedants. You know you are. And they will like create little comments like, you say key. Do you mean house key? Car key? <laughs> Locker key? You know, like, it's obvious from context. If they have the questions, you have to think about why they have the question. But let me tell you, 400 pages of this makes every writer homicidal. <laughs> that to me takes about two weeks going through answering all the questions. But no, no, my friends, you are not now done. <laughs> there is one more round. If the copy editor goes well and every everybody's happy. Then it gets put in what they used to call galley proofs and now they just call proofs. It's typeset. So it's how it will look in the book. You try to do it very quickly because you want to read it like a reader at that stage, or at least I do. I read it as fast as I can and if I get the manuscript, say, on a Wednesday, what I generally do is start reading it Friday morning, read it Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, and I need to finish it on Sunday in my opinion, just because that's how you catch repetition, just like the things you're going to catch as a reader. If you read it slowly, you're not going to notice that you use the same word twice in three pages and it's a distinctive word and it will annoy reader like it's things like that. So you're looking for errors, typos, mistakes in the typesetting, general tomfoolery that somehow you've missed earlier on and that you don't want in that final book. And that's the last one man when you send those edits off like your heart is in your throat you've read this so many times but that's where any mess ups that are in it at that stage they are going to be printed <laughs> and they are going to people and people will well on Goodreads they will say on page 265 you missed this comma and you use the same word twice what an idiot. Not that I read Goodreads I don't go there I rise above rise above Thank you so much for being here to discuss editing with me and a very sleepy puppy. Watch some other videos. I talk a lot about the publishing process and the videos around, so just click on the links below. Find one that is about something that interests you. Subscribe, hang out, be part of um, my world, and um, tell me what you think in the comments. I would love to hear from you. See you soon.